In the last video, we added a rotation matrix to rotate our cube so that our scene looked a little more three-dimensional than what we had. And in the process of doing that, we added the rotation matrix, and then we slammed all the matrices into one matrix by using matrix multiplication, put it into this full transformation, and then sent the full transformation into our shader, our vertex shader to be specific, so that the vertex shader could apply that matrix to every single vertex and rotate our cube. I want to look a little more at these mate fours or these matrix fours, these temporary objects that we're passing into both translate and rotate. I want to optimize this a little bit. But before doing that, let's go look at our shader, Control Alt L, our vertex shader to be specific. And notice that we take the matrix, put it on the left, and multiply it with the vertex on the right, and that causes this vertex to move and allows us to get that three-dimensional scene. It's possible to put the vertex, actually I'll put it right here, vertex on the left of the matrix, but then we'd have to transpose the matrix and I have to get in a whole bunch of matrix stuff. So just know it's possible to put it on the left, but we'd have to do a lot of work before doing so. And then what we're going to do consistently is just put our vertex on the right and we'll hit it with a matrix on the left. Well, when you put a bunch of matrices in a one matrix, and you apply that matrix to the vertex, it's the same as if you applied the matrices individually to the vertex in the order that those matrices will hit the vertex. Again, I'll show this in a different video, but just to give you an idea, I'm going to put our vertex out here, multiplication sign right here. And then remember, we smash all these into this one matrix. But instead, what I'm going to say is, well, what we're really doing is hitting the vertex with the rotation matrix. And then after we're done hitting it with the rotation matrix, we hit it with the translation matrix. And then after doing that, we hit the vertex with the projection matrix. So it's the same as if we hit the vertex individually with each one of these matrices in this order, similar to what we did a couple videos ago, but instead we just do it with one matrix instead. So building these matrices can get a little expensive. It's very common. Every frame when we want to draw, we have to build these matrices and combine them together. And GLM Smart it says, you know what? I'll build you a translation matrix. But in the meantime, while I'm building this, I can do some optimizations and essentially do the multiply while I build the matrix for you. We don't need to build a separate matrix and then combine it with what you had already. Instead, what we can do is say, well, let's build the translation matrix at this end, also multiply the translation matrix with what you give me ahead of time. It's it's like killing two birds with one stone, if you've ever heard of that saying. So on that note, let's reorder our matrices. I'm going to reorder these in the same order that we're hitting the vertex with. Let's put the projection matrix first because it's going to hit the vertex last, and then we have the translation matrix, and then we have the rotation matrix. So it's it's kind of like, here's our vertex, hit it with rotation, hit it with translation, hit it with projection. And so now that these matrices are listed in the order that I want to apply them to the vertice, I can now chain these matrices in the same time while we create them. So projection matrix, I, I'm going to say, to the translation or the translate function. I say, hey, translate, I want you to do a translate down the negative Z axis here, negative Z. But while you're building that matrix, I already have a matrix I want you to multiply while you build that matrix. It's called the projection matrix. So I'll pass you the projection matrix and use that while you're building your new matrix. And then, oh, hey, by the way, rotate. I already have a matrix here. It's called the translation matrix. I guess it's translation now with projection. So I'll actually call this projection, control shift u translation matrix, because it'll hit it with the translation first, and then the projection. So I have this matrix, rotate while you build yourself. I already have a matrix. Please optimize and perform the multiplication while building the matrix that I'm asking you to build here. So now we have rotation matrix, but really this is our full transform matrix now, isn't it? We had our full transform matrix here, which we combined all these matrices, but now I don't need to waste the time and do this multiplication because we already did it. We combined it as we went. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it there, control shift L to delete that line, do it one more time to remove the white space. And if all worked well, we should still have that rotated cube, exactly what we saw at the beginning of the video. Control F5, build, and you see 
Here is our rotated cube. We saved a few nanoseconds. You know, go green, save the trees. Let's save some nanoseconds on our processor so we don't have to build as much coal to generate electricity. So that, anyway, there you go. That's the whole reason why GLM accepts matrices. Here is the first argument saying, hey, give me what you already got, and I'll combine it while I'm building the other matrices.